I've been getting a lot of questions and concerns about us towing our Airstream with our F-150 and how it handles and and basically just how it tows. So I thought I'd do just a short video on our towing setup and yeah, how the F-150 makes out. So to start with, we have what we are towing, which is our Silver Surfer, as we affectionately call our 2019 Flying Cloud uh, 30FB Airstream. Now, this guy weighs 6,700 pounds empty, and the loaded weight is 8,800. But I'm pretty sure, I haven't weighed it yet, and I wish I could, and when I, I will when I get a chance, but I don't think we're towing at 8,800 pounds. We don't, number one, we never have the, the water tanks all full, and um, we don't really have it packed too tightly. My best guess is it's probably 8,000 maybe even just a little bit below, high 7,000s. So we're towing, let's just say, for argument's sake, 8,000 pounds, um, the trailer. And we are towing it with the Unicorn, as we call our F-150. And this F-150 is a F-150 XLT. And the relevant options that we have on here is that it's a 4x4 to start with. And it has the uh, max towing package, which gets you uh, this. And more importantly, it has the heavy duty payload package. And the heavy duty payload package gets you this. And that heavy-duty payload package results in a payload capacity of 2,453 pounds as it's configured, as this truck is configured. And the last option that's important to mention is the engine in this F-150 is the 3.5 liter EcoBoost, which has 470 pound-feet of torque. So, I mean, it's not a diesel engine, okay? It's not gonna pull as nice as a diesel engine, but for a gas engine, you know, 470 pounds is, is pretty good. And, um, you know, we figured that it would do the job for us with the Airstream. Let me be frank, without that heavy duty payload package, we wouldn't be using an F-150. We would run out of payload just by hooking up the Airstream and then putting stuff in it. Um, so that is absolutely essential. And the reason, we call this the unicorn, is because this configuration on F-150 really doesn't exist. Uh, it's not that common. I had to special order this and no one carries it. Um, the reason being is if you want the towing capacity and the payload capacity that these options get you on an F-150, well, you just go buy an F-250. That's what everyone else does. I mean, that's basically what it does. Um, the reason we didn't do that is the F-250, the way it's constructed is it's a little bit higher off the ground, it's, got, it's a little bit longer, and it would be a little bit more difficult for my wife to put the kids, because she's only five foot one, in and out of the truck. I mean, you can see this guy is still pretty low to the ground, even with four by four, so it's easy for Jessica to get the kids in and out. And, you know, it's got a little better turning radius and whatnot, and we're using this as our daily driver every day, so. Um, it was important, yeah, for me to have even just that little bit of more maneuverability and, and lower height. So that's why we wanted to get the F-150 and then opt for the 250. Um, but we had to special order it. So, um, how does it perform? So first thing is gas mileage. We get, when we are towing on flat ground, doing 66 miles an hour on cruise control, with you know just normal winds, no huge headwind, we get about 9.6 to 10 miles to the gallon while we're towing, set up just like this. Um, which, I don't know, I, I guess that's good enough. I didn't really ever expect anything better than that. I actually was kind of surprised. I thought it was gonna be eight or nine miles a gallon. Um, 
I don't know what we get going through the mountains just because that's kind of subjective or it really depends on how mountainous it is and how much you're going up and down hills. So those numbers are kind of a little bit meaningless. Um, but that's what we get towing. Um, so the next question would be, how does it tow up hills, up the mountains, you know? And so we just came through the Rocky Mountains and we did Loveland Pass, which tops out at 12,000 feet, uh, Rabbit Ears Pass, which is just over 9,000 feet, and another one on the Wyoming-Colorado border. And for example, so let's say uh, Rabbit Ears Pass, that was a 6.8% grade for about five miles. And towing uphill, up that, we did, let's see. All right, we're going up Rabbit Ears Pass and the truck seems fine. The, we have, so we have a 3.5 liter EcoBoost and it's, we're doing 50 miles an hour up a 6.8% grade and we're at 2,500 to 3,000 RPMs and, you know, not a problem at all. So overall, uh, the truck is good. Basically that EcoBoost engine, it towed up just fine. I mean, we weren't flying. I didn't have it, I didn't have it floored either by any means, but it towed up that mountain without any trouble at all. So I was really happy with, with that. Shh. So I was really happy with the EcoBoost engine with towing up the mountains. And then for all the up and down in the, in the Rocky Mountains, um, didn't have any problems. Um, you know, no lack, of, no lack of power. You know, and granted, we're not towing a giant fifth wheel. You know, it's not like this is a 12,000 pound trailer that we're towing up the hill. You know, this probably wouldn't do it otherwise. But um, yeah, for this 30 foot Airstream, it tows just fine uphill. Um, going downhill, as far as the brakes go, it's not a diesel, so we don't have the engine brake. Um, coming down Loveland Pass, and that was another six and a half to eight, seven percent grade for, I don't know, seven miles. You know, it, it braked fine near the bottom. You could tell that the brakes were getting hot and, you know, they were a little bit less responsive. So, that's one thing the F-250 does have is a little bit larger brakes than this has, even with the packages I got here. Um, I can always upgrade that if I feel like we need it. You know, we can always throw on some beefier brakes. Um, but it, it performed fine. It wasn't, you know, I never felt unsafe coming down any of the mountain passes. Um, but, you know, maybe in the future, if I, maybe I will decide to put some bigger brakes on when I have to replace them. But for the most part, it's, it's okay. Um, and finally, I guess the last thing would be how it just tows or handles overall as far as, um, you know, trailer sway and, and just going down the highway. And that, I have to say, it tows beautifully. And I can't really, I don't really attribute most of that to this F-150 as much as I do to the hitch we have, which, hold on, Logan. This is the hitch we have and it's a Pro Pride uh, hitch. It's basically the same as a Hensley hitch if you're familiar with a Hensley hitch. And so what this thing, you can see this giant thing, it's kind of a trapezoidal mechanical feature that what happens is it projects any of the force up to near the axle up here. So it completely eliminates trailer sway. And um, this thing has been awesome. I mean, we don't get any trailer sway at all. For example, uh, we were driving on I-70 and they had one whole side of the highway closed. So there was, you know, the traffic was just right next to each other, going by with just cones in the middle. And so we had semi trucks blasting in the opposite direction at 70 miles an hour. And I don't feel a thing. Um, driving with super high winds in the Great Plains with a towing trailer, I don't feel a thing. Um, have never felt any trailer sway at all with this thing. Um, the biggest drawback to this is number one, the cost. It's about three thousand dollars, but um, you know it is a lot safer to drive with. The other thing I will say about it, though, is that as pricey as it is, it doesn't really depreciate. I mean, it's just a big hunk of steel, and I looked for used ones. You can't buy them. You can't find them. Like people just sell them, and they they sell like crazy. You know. The used ones sell right away and they sell for pretty much what you're going to get for it. So even if in a few years we decide to sell everything, 
I'll probably get close to $3,000 anyway. Train. So I'm really happy with the hitch. Um, probably the other thing just to note is, and I mentioned this when I was talking about the options on the truck, but we did opt for the longer truck bed. So that's the six and a half instead of the five and a half. And what that does is it also extends the wheelbase just a little bit. And that also helps, you know, with trailer sway and, and a little bit of, uh, with stability. Overall, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. You know, I don't have any complaints really. Um, you know, if I had to go back and do it again, I'd buy the same thing. Now, maybe in a year after towing even more and I don't know if something starts breaking on here, maybe I'll have a different opinion, but for now it's meeting all our needs and it's towing the Airstream beautifully, you know, all 30 feet of it. So, um, that's it.